In this tutorial, what we're going to do is look at how to create our own Captions button. Uh, you can see by default the Captions button is on the player, so when I click on it, it's going to show the captions here. And when I click it, it's going to not show the captions. So what happens though is if I don't want the player controls, which a lot of people do in their e-learning courses, they get rid of all the player controls. And I want to create my own captions button on the slide. How do I do that? So let's go ahead and see how we do that. So I'm going to close this out. And a couple things we want to do is we want to customize the player first. So let's go ahead and go up to the player. And we're going to turn off some things just so we kind of get a, a borderless player. So we're going to uh, get rid of the title up here. And we're going to get rid of the sidebar menu. Let's just click on the menu option here. And we're going to go ahead. I can see I've got the volume and captions. So I'm going to turn off volume. I'm going to turn off captions. Now that we have the previous next buttons, and those are controlled at the slide level. Uh, so we're going to hit OK. And let's come over here to the slide properties. There's a little gear icon, uh, or you can double click on the slide. That opens up your properties. And we're going to turn off the preview, previous, and next buttons. So hit OK. So now if we preview the slide, we really should just have kind of a chromeless or borderless, um, uh, no player type uh, course. Now, the problem though is we can't access our captions. The nice thing is, Storyline does give you access to the variable for the caption. So, we're going to go ahead and add our own button using that variable. So, let's do this. A couple things we want to consider about the captions. Uh, you know, captions, uh, when you think about it, you either, uh, it's like a switch. You're either going to show the captions or not show them, or display them and not display them. So they work a lot like the true false variable. So it's either true or it's false, or like a toggle switch, it's on or off. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert a button and then we're going to add a trigger to adjust the variable. And the variable we're going to adjust is the captions variable. And so when we click it, it's going to change the value of the variable. And when we click it again, it's going to change it back. So pretty simple to do. First thing we'll do is just insert a button. So let's just choose any button. I'm just going to, I'll just put it down here. So we have our captions button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the add trigger. And what do we want to do? We want to adjust the variable. Well, which variable do we want to adjust? We want to adjust the player display captions variable. So it's basically a variable that sets the value. Is the caption going to display or not display? Now it works like a true false variable. So uh, we do this. Now this, this is where the triggers become interesting. Um, so you don't really have to do a lot because if you think about it, it's either going to display or not display. It's either on or off, or it's either true or false. So when I click the button, if it's on and I click the button, I want to turn it off. If it's off and I click the button, I want to turn it on. So what we want to do is basically say, I want to click the button and make it the opposite of what it is. And we can do this because just like a true false, there's only two values. It's going to be displayed or not displayed. So what we can do for the operator, instead of choosing an assignment or values or anything like that, we just say we want the operator be not assignment. So what that basically means is when I click this button, let's say it's on, when I click the button, it's on, so the opposite, what it's not assigned to, is off. So when I click it, I want it to be what it's not assigned to, which is off. And if it's off and I click it, I want it to be what it's not assigned to, which is going to be on. And this only works because it's a toggle, because you either have a display or no display. Just like true or false, you either have true or false. If you had three options, it wouldn't work because you don't have a not assignment, right? So not assignment basically is the opposite of what it is or the other option that you have. So it's basically adjust the variable player display caption. So we're going to change the caption display. And it's just going to be the opposite of what we're doing when we click the button. So we hit OK. And so now if we preview this, and you can see the trigger here, toggle variable captions when the user clicks. So it's just going to toggle back and forth. So if we preview this, right now it's not displaying. And when I click on it, it does display. And when I click on it again, it doesn't display. So it's just toggling between that variable's values. So pretty simple. It's just use that not assignment for your operator. 
Uh, now, obviously, you want to move the button. Now, if you want to create some interesting buttons, you have a few options with the buttons, right? So let's we saw that was a little um, overlap. So we can take the button here. One option you have is you have a selected state in Storyline. So selected state is a toggle. So it's either selected or not selected. So what we're going to do is we have our normal state here, and we're going to create a selected state for this button. So let's go to Edit, and we'll create a new state. And selected is just a pre-built state, and it just means it's selected. And when I click on it again, it's going to be deselected. So we're going to hit Selected. And let's just click in here and make it orange, just so we can see that it's a different color. So if I preview the button, when I click on the button, it's either going to be selected or not selected. And at the same time, it's going to trigger that variable change. So you can see it's, de it's selected, now it's deselected. And at the same time, it, the variable's on, off. Display, don't display. Right, so using that selected state lets me kind of create a customization to the button. Now if you really wanted to get fancy, a couple things you can do is you can come up to the button here, and you could see if there's a caption type option. You might have a caption, right? Maybe something that looks like text. It could be something like this, right? Maybe this means this is your caption. Uh, and then if you go to home and you increase the size of your font, uh, this could be your caption box, right? That makes it, that's a nice little caption box. Let's preview this. So we've got a little caption box, right? So that could be your caption. You can use the CC. The other thing you can do that's really neat is you can go into Insert. We'll go to the icons, and you have uh, captions you can type in here. And you might find a caption that you like. Like for example, here's the CC caption, or maybe I want to use something that looks like this. So I can use one of these icons. And let's just go ahead and let's see what else they have. I want something that's probably a little bit more solid. Um, we'll just take this. We'll make this our captions. So now I've got a caption button here. Now if you want to cheat and make this really fast, I already created all this stuff here with the selected state. So I'm just going to do Format Painter and select this icon. And now I've got the same thing, same options here. And I can turn off the shape outline. And I've got my little captions button here. Now it's going to be transparent, so I might want to fix that. But let's just go ahead and copy this variable. And I'm going to paste it onto this shape here. Oops. Here, here it is. We're going to copy this variable here. And we're going to paste it onto this shape. And now this also has its caption. So we're going to just move this on top. And using those icons, I was able to create a custom caption as well, right? So you can see what I can do. Now, as I was saying here, it's transparent, right? So you want to make sure you get something that's solid probably, so you don't have to worry about uh, filling that in. If you do want to fill it in, you can just come into these states here, and then you can add a text box, for example. This is all a little extra bonus material. So let's do this. We'll add a text box here. And you can see how that works. And I'm just going to make it white. And what I can do is send this to the back. And now it's part of that. And then I would just do that for the rest of these as well. I can just copy this since we don't need to worry about the other ones. We're going to come over to this state and we'll do a paste and we'll send that to the back as well. So now it's solid so I don't need to worry about um, clicking through a transparent area. And you can see how that works. right? Pretty cool. So a lot of neat things you can do. You can uh, create your own toggle caption trigger, and then you can use the icons or the buttons or do whatever you want to do. Uh, whatever you want to do to trigger the captions, uh, you can do that. You might want to have the slide trigger the captions automatically, and then just give them an option to turn those off. So it just depends on how you want to approach that.